In 1965, a 69-year-old Hindu monk, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, crosses the ocean to America to spread the spiritual message of Krishna. His first temple is established on the Lower East Side of New York City, where he preaches in the traditions of Vaishnavism, one of the major branches of Hinduism. In 1966, he establishes the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. After a few years, when he returns to his native Bengal, he brings new Western disciples with him, who are eager to help the aging Swami realize his ambitious vision to create a spiritual city on the bank of the Ganges, in the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya, worshipped as an incarnation of Lord Krishna, and who appeared in the 15th century. One of Swami Prabhupada's main desires is to build a grand temple in this city of Mayapur, in West Bengal, India, 130 kilometers north of Kolkata. This structure would also serve as a planetarium, depicting the science of the ancient Vedic cosmology. Among the devotees who help him are a handful of talented American and British young men. One of them is Jayapataka Swami, who, over 40 years later, despite his current health challenges, is still one of the most influential leaders of the Mayapur project. I was personally involved by Prasila Prabhupada in about 1971 or 72, and he sent me out here to uh, be the president here, our co-director, along with Bob uh, And There was nothing here, nothing. Nothing, it was just rice fields. There were no trees like there are trees all along the road. Nothing, there were no stores, there was nothing. It was just the road and rice fields, as far as you could see. That we got the land here, and gradually uh, we started to build up. So in the beginning, <coughs> there were very few devotees, and just some cows, and uh, Bees, and we uh, learned how to live a natural life. But the agenda here was to build a city. Uh, in other places, Carl thought he wants to uh, build a village. But here the idea was to build a city. So this should be mentioned. Ah. Uh, it is not only a temple, but a planet, ah. according to Mahatma. Where, which planet is situated? Where is Vaikuntha Lok? Where is Golok Vrindavan? Wow. Uh, One of the real planetariums, yeah. like in the West. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's what I told him that, uh, yeah. that this is not a temple, this is like a big uh, cultural exposition museum, yeah. planetarium. In 2010, finally, more than three decades after the passing of Prabhupada, the construction of the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium starts up. The great building is intended to be unique in size, interior and exterior artwork, and overall design. But what makes it truly exceptional is that it will represent a unity between the two aspects of the human search for truth, science and religion. A central challenge remains, however, can, in the 21st century, science and religion really be reconciled. In the world of science, an idea or theory may have many different inspirations. A scientific idea could come from some religious text, it could come from a dream, 
It could come from a novel or a poem. The source of the idea isn't what's important. What's important is that a scientist is able to justify the idea in terms of observation, experiment, and scientific inference. If that can be done, it doesn't matter where the idea comes from. People often make a distinction between <clears throat> faith and knowledge. That religion is the abode of faith and science is the abode of knowledge. But this distinction is very artificial. Both religion and science, each of them have faith and knowledge. The modern approach is that I have faith in my perception and if I can perceive something, then it's fact. Our approach is somewhat different. We have solid scientific knowledge that is based on the Vedic statements. And we have faith in those Vedic statements. And the two combined mean that we are in a position to be able to understand properly the scientific workings behind everything. Religious texts have a long history of scientific relevance. For example, James Clark Maxwell was a prominent British physicist. He invented the equations that unify electricity and magnetism, and he's very famous for that. He was actually a member of a Christian sect called the Sandemanians, and they believe that the Bible said all energies are unified in God. That was one of their essential teachings, one of their understandings of the Bible. And that understanding very much influenced Maxwell in his attempt to unify the theories of electricity and magnetism. There are many other examples that could be given. Prabhupada understood very clearly that science without religion is incomplete. Religion without science is incomplete. The two do go together. There was Prabhupada's idea to have an actual planetarium in the main temple, uh, as well as uh, a depiction of the Puranic model of the universe, uh, according to the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the main dome. But nowadays we have this mechanistic worldview that's being presented to us through the schools and colleges, through the newspapers, through the TV and all the other media. Uh, and they're presenting a rather dreary picture of the universe that it's just some dull matter and somehow or another it magically gives rise to life. When you look at the actual science that's being presented, much of it is just speculation. It's not based on any proven fact. Part of Prabhupada's mission was to confront modern scientific atheistic theory, which is that life comes from matter, that somehow or other there was a big bang and life evolved, Darwin's theory and all that. But from the Bhagavatam we understand that that is just not true, you know, that life comes from life. What we're presenting in this model, uh, in our planetarium, uh, will be a cosmos which is full of life. Srila Prabhupada described in a letter to a fellow by the name of Mr. Dhani in, I think it was 1976, an overview of what will be contained within our planetary model display in the main dome of the temple. And he outlined 15 different levels in this display beginning from the very bottom of the universe where there is Gabbadakshaya Vishnu lying on an Antashayesh, subterranean planets, earthly realm, 
you know, heavenly planets and so on, higher and higher and higher, all the way up to Brahma Loka and then the coverings of the universe. Beyond that, uh, Shiva Loka and uh, Mahavishnu breathing out innumerable universes, Brahma Jyoti and Vaikuntha planets and at the very top will be Goloka Vrindavan, so Krishna and his associates in various rasas. So that all together comprises the planetary display to go within the main dome of the temple. Initially it started with research into how to display the planetary movements that we see in the sky and how that correlates to the movements of the planets that are described in the Bhagavatam. So we have a small team and we research the statements you know, given by Acharyas on the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam and pull out the different points that, that try and tie everything together into a, a cohesive model that accurately describes you know, how the Bhagavatam statements match what we see in the sky. The instructions of the Bhagavatam and the Acharyas and other Puranas, we can show that what's explained in there is not some mythology, as many people have said over the years, but actually it's a science. There's a correlation between what we see with our eyes and what we will present in the planetary model. Uh, however, what we, will, what we will be presenting is that which needs higher vision to see. It's not that if we look in the sky, we'll see exactly as we show in the model, but what is shown in the model correlates exactly to what is seen in the sky. Within the Vedic tradition, there is Jyotish Shastra. It's one of the Vedangas, the ancillary sciences for understanding the Veda. There's six of them, so Jyotish is one of those. It encompasses both astronomy and astrology. And it's a science that has been existing within India for thousands upon thousands of years. You know, it, it, Surya Siddhanta is one of the most famous texts. It was spoken long ago. There's others spoken by Lord Brahma, the Brahma Siddhanta, the, the moon god Soma Siddhanta, so many others. There's a long tradition of, of astronomical studies within India. And these are verifiable in that you can make the calculations that come in these texts and you'll see that they accurately describe the positions of the planets. Even with the current understanding of these texts, which is somewhat faulty, still their calculations come out to be very close. We'll be presenting scientific evidence to support everything that uh, our exhibits uh, will uh, show to the people. What we want to do is to open people up at least to the possibility of a different world view than the mechanistic worldview which is currently prevalent and which is really being pushed very strongly uh, that this is the only way that you can see the universe. Uh, there are other ways and we want people to know what those other ways are and then we'll leave it to them to decide what they find to be more credible. The exhibits and displays, films and multimedia presentations at the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium are based on massive research conducted by scholars of cosmology, biology, anthropology, mathematics, and astronomy from all over the world. Their work is supported by the Kolkata-based Bhaktivedanta Research Center with its 16,000 volume library, which specializes in ancient Indian manuscripts, other rarities, and works of science of ancient and modern times. So Srila Prabhupada asked, in 1976 or so, that even earlier, that devotees in ISKCON seriously take up this research to develop the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium. But for a long time, there was great difficulty in doing that for various reasons. Some thought it couldn't be done even. But the first devotee who made significant breakthroughs in there uh, was Sadaputta Prabhu who published his book, Vedic Cosmography and Astronomy, which was published in around 19, late 1980s or 1990. And in there he very strongly took up the position that the Bhagavatam is describing factual, it's a factual description of the universe, uh, not a mythological description. The um, Temple of the Vedic Planetarium uh, the west wing of the building 
uh, will comprise of about three levels of exhibits of various kinds. Those exhibits will be based uh, on these works. Uh, we have hundreds of exhibits actually that we can present, uh, all giving evidence uh, of a conscious based universe. Uh, and um, on the top level, we'll be having a 23 meter tilted dome, uh, uh, which will be an actual planetarium. It will seat about 275 people at a time and we'll be making various presentations, film presentations there. And that theatre also can be used for conventions uh, and other works. In Mayapur, uh, we are currently receiving about four million visitors a year. That's before this new temple has been built. When the Temple of the Vedic Planetarium is completed uh, and opened, we expect that we will get probably about one crore of visitors a year, that's about 10 million visitors a year. We are hoping that um, businesses and individuals, particularly in India, will step forward. Uh, they'll help uh, to sponsor the different exhibits that we can show there uh, and the Planetarium Theatre. Uh, and that way they'll get some exposure uh, to their businesses uh, and at the same time, they'll be promoting uh, the very valuable, very wonderful, ancient Indian culture uh, and philosophy.